Today, let's talk about logic and variables. But first, what is logic? Basically, logic gives you control over how your form reacts to your user's responses. So it makes your forms responsive and dynamic. Logic works by setting the rules so that your users can skip certain questions based on their previous answer so that they don't have to see every single question on your form that is not relevant to them. You can use logic on so many different types of forms, like for example personality quizzes, educational purposes like a math quiz, but also for job estimations and quotation forms to name a few. And what are variables? A variable is like a container or a label that the form uses to remember specific information you provide. It's kind of like putting labels on boxes to keep track of what's inside. In short, variables give online forms the ability to remember, process, and react to the data that you provide, making your interactions with the form more interactive and customized to your needs. To show you a great example of logic, let's head over to the templates gallery from your Formally dashboard and let's use this product recommender quiz. So click on use this template and from here, as you can see, this is the edit tab. So let's head over to the logic and calculations tab. Awesome, here you can see a diagram of the logic of this form. When you create yours, it will also automatically display like this. You can zoom in and zoom out to see the logic structure better. And if we click on one of the options, you can see here its conditions. And as a whole picture, this is the basic logic. To edit or to add logic and to use it to its full potential, Click here the Advanced Logic button. A logic rule is like a set of instructions. It has two parts, a condition, which is like when this happens rule, and an action, which is like do this command. So when the condition you set is true, the action you picked will happen. Like here, this question for example. Your user chooses one of these options, then the next question that will appear to them will be, we've got sunglasses personalized for you. And as you can see, it has three different actions. From there, an action is what happens when the condition happens on the form. But you can also use the AND OR option if you want to use a conditional statement that is either true or false. Here you can see the default logic. As you can see, it says ALWAYS. This is when the only rule is the default rule, which means the action will be taken unconditionally, like for example, ALWAYS JUMP TO FIELD I'M LOOKING FOR. And then there's the OTHERWISE. Think of it like a backup plan. If none of the special rules work, this default rule kicks in. It's like a safety net for when everything else fails. You can create multiple logic rules and you can do so by creating your first rule by clicking here on the add if else button. And then you can create more rules by simply clicking on the add another button. For the logical conditions, you can see here on question four, if my face shape is, choose the field you want to create a rule on. So let's choose option three, oval and your user chooses option 2, men's sunglasses, then jump to Smith, low down slim. Basically, when you see if and pick a question, you're deciding which question to give a rule to. You can make rules for each question based on the ones before it. For example, the first question gets its own rule. The second question can have a rule for itself and the first question. The third question rule can include all the questions before it. There are different evaluation options depending on the fields that you have added in your form. So for example, choice fields like single choice, multi-choice, drop-down will give you the options is, is not, is answered. Text-based fields like short text, email, phone, etc. will have is equal to, is not equal to, contains, doesn't contain, starts with, ends with, is answered. Numerical fields like number and variable of type integer will have is equal to, is not equal to, is greater than, is less than, is greater than or equal to, is less than or equal to, is answered. But except that the variable of type integer doesn't have the is answered evaluation option because variables don't get answered by users on the form. I'll explain variables in the next chapters of this video, so make sure to keep watching. Then there's the evaluation value. So for example, you can type the value in the field if a number field is bigger than three, and here you type in the three, or if name is Tom, and here you type in the value Tom. You can choose from the list if field number one is bigger than field number two, or if the selected choice field is option one. And with possible actions, you can show a specific field or fields, which means that by default, this field will be hidden unless this condition happens on the form to show the field and it is only available on single step forms. 
You can also hide a specific field or fields, which means that by default the field will be visible on the form unless this condition happens on the form to hide the field. It is also only available on single step forms. And by default, all fields are visible unless you hide them with logic. By default, the logic is set to jump from question A to question B to C. But you can use logic to skip question B from A and directly to C. Only available on multi-step forms, but on single step forms you can show and hide questions. For example, if the user chooses I'm a business, ask for the business name instead of the person name. The after submit go to link option is good for sending your users to your different landing pages based on their questions. The after submit go to success page is a default success page. So by default, all submissions will show the success page and you can customize it and show it on the form editor. But you can also create more custom success pages too. I will very quickly show you how. So go to your edit tab and add a success message. Customize it and that's it. The add, subtract, multiply, divide are variables and calculators. Before I explain these actions, let's talk about variables. Think of them like special containers that hold numbers temporarily. Imagine you have a number and want to find 10% of it. You can use a variable to save that 10% so you can use it later. Think of a variable like a basket. Imagine you have a basket to put apples in. You pick an apple, calculate its size, and put it in the basket. Later, when you need to use that apple size, you can just look into the basket instead of measuring again. And there are two default variables that exist on all forms, such as price. This variable is connected to the payment method that you set on your form. So if the form has a payment method, your form will redirect to it after submission and the user will be able to pay the value stored in the price variable, which means the form will use the price variable to know how much to charge the user when they finish completing the form. The score variable is a default variable we added for you to calculate different values, but you can skip using it and create instead a custom variable field with a name that matches your use case. So basically, it's a ready-to-use tool for counting things. But if you want, you can make your own counting tool with a name that fits what you're counting. Then you have different custom variables types such as integer, which gets numerical values, decimal, if you want your numerical values to have decimals, use this variable type, text, to store text values, formula, to store formulas. You can add your formula in the default value of the variable field. For example, you can multiply two numbers in the form and store the result in your formula variable. The field right after the action is like the place where the action happens. For example, when you want to add, you can type the number you're adding. So basically, you can type the value in the field, like for example, add 3 to a specific variable, and here you type in the 3. Or you can pick things from a list to add together. Like for example, add variable 1 to variable 2, where both variable 1 and variable 2 are non-formula variables. Okay, now that I have shown you how to calculate variables and different values, you might want to show the user the results of these calculations so they know what's happening. To show the value of a variable, you can simply use answer piping. Put the ID of the variable in double braces and it will show the latest result of it in real time. A good example is the job estimate template, which when you change options and numbers on the form, it changes the final payable amount. Here are a few templates that you can use and check out where they contain logic and variables. Like for example, this order form. You can see here it uses logic. And with this self-grading quiz, if we go to the logic tab of this template, we can see its logic and how it has been set. But also this product recommender contains logic. And this personality quiz that contains variable field right here. And finally, this area calculator that is in the view of an app. And that's it! I hope this video was helpful and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and please don't forget to like this video, subscribe and share with your friends! Happy formulaing!